we look at general um, general social choice rules so going back to making the design environment where we need to provide incentives for people to reveal their types and so on how can we de determine whether a given social choice function is implementable or not I call this topic differently in all the different places in the slides it's called testing implementability I'll just call it implementability um, of arbitrary social choice functions Let's see, yes. and this is our topic for the remainder of today and I guess some of next time so the question as I just told you is how can we check quickly or what is the criterion that we can use to check whether a given social choice function SCF F that maps again type profiles into alternative into outcomes easing in back into the mechanism design environment to check whether this social choice function is implementable we have already seen two answers to this question in the course so far and I want you to tell me what they are so what's the first question how can we check whether a given social choice function is implementable or not. What is the quick recipe we have? The shortcut. Yes, the revelation principle. So, this was our main motivation for this uh, principle. We said that instead of brute forcing through all possible mechanisms to check whether there is one mechanism that implements this, we can only look at direct revelation mechanisms and uh, check whether it implements some social choice function and once again here the question is at this point in time about a given social choice function so we do not even have the freedom to design transfers so the, the, the only thing we need to do is to write out the incentive compatibility conditions and to verify that they hold to check whether they hold or not but this is the answer that we have and I wanted to revisit one aspect of this answer that I did not look at before. So how do incentive compatibility conditions look like in general case? We have utility of player i from this outcome f given some type theta i, theta, uh, theta minus i, given the true type theta i. And this should be better then utility from the outcome that is selected if player i means reports their type and everything else is the same so this is the incentive compatibility condition right let us write the opposite to it let's say well type theta hat i should also not be willing to report type theta i you can kind of already see that this that the incentive compatibility conditions are not just some random inequalities or collections of inequalities they can actually tell us something about f about something that f needs to be in order to be incentive compatible so you see that here type theta i should prefer the outcome intended for type theta i out of the two of these outcomes and type theta hat i should prefer the outcome destined for type theta hat i it is a fancy way of restating just incentive compatibility right that's, that's exactly what it is but you feel the idea here right each type should prefer the outcome that is meant for them as opposed to the outcome that is meant for any other type and here we're talking about domain strategies again we touched and went on Bayesian implementation so back to back to the domain strategies and this has its own name 
I, I took it from old lecture notes. I do not actually really know where it comes from and whether anybody actually uses this. But this is called the weak preference reversal property. And to restate it again, it says that if you have two types, and these types are choosing between the two alternatives destined for both of them, then they should both prefer uh, their own alternative. Once we change type of theta to theta ahead, preference reverses weakly, I guess, because these are weak inequalities. Well, might well. Right, okay, um, now, now, that's just it. So I wanted to quickly tell you about weak preference reversal property, tell you that it exists. And now we can mention the second answer to this initial question that we saw in the class. And uh, if this discussion of weak preference reversal has reminded you of something, it's probably that. So, what other quick criterion, quick requirement towards the social choice functions have we seen in the course? Maybe not in the general setting, but in some settings. Monotonicity, bingo. We had, when we were discussing the revenue equivalence, we said that, well, you know, in those quasi-linear settings, Social choice, not the social choice function, but actually the allocation key in quasi-linear settings where we have access to money. In order for there to exist transfers that implement this key, key must be monotone. So weekly increasing or in some cases weekly decreasing depending on the formulation of the problem, but it must be weekly monotone. And uh, I will just quickly restate that. So in Euclidean setting, yeah. For k to be implementable, it must be monotone. When we were talking about revenue equivalence, at the beginning of this lecture, I told you that we initially stated it for the Euclidean setting with independent types in the case of Bayesian implementation. And so monotonicity was also stated for those two settings. But as revenue equivalents can be extended more generally to quasi-linear settings with some restrictions, so can be monotonicity. And if anything, we can extend it even further than, um, than, to, than revenue equivalents. We can extend both the requirement of monotonicity and relax the setting simultaneously. We will have that in weaker settings, 4K to be implementable, it must be some other kind of monotone. Firstly, to stick with quasi-linear setting a little bit, we just um, did this in one direction. So, k, if k is implementable, it is monotone. But turns out it is a sharp characterization, so you can have it the other way too. If k is monotone in the right direction, then you can find transfers which support it. If k is monotone, it is implemented. So in the end, k is monotone if and only if it is implemented. And the way you can do it, the proof is quite simple. There's some mechanics involved, but the idea is that you have the revenue equivalence statement, and you can use that to pin down the transfers. So it was exactly what I tried to do in the beginning of the lecture when we were proving uh, the statement for GVCG. And I will ask you to prove this statement in the homework. So do the thing that I tried to do in the beginning of the lecture, and construct the transfers from the revenue equivalent statement. And you will have to design transfers from scratch. You, you, your only knowledge will be that k is monotone. And the settings you click in. So here by implementability, I mean uh, in dominant strategy. 
Good. Now, as I promised, let's try to relax this. So if we go to quasi-linear settings, there are two notions in the slides. So there is weak monotonicity for k, yes. And there is also cyclical monotonicity for k. And I will not state these definitions. I will not tell you even what they mean. They have a little bit of this vibe. But the statements are if k is implement implementable, I would say dominant stretching seems compatible because it's shorter, then it is weakly monotone in the sense defined in the slides. And this really has nothing to do with this monotonicity here, because in the Euclidean setting, our k is just a number for every player. When we say monotone, we usually assume weekly monotone, in the sense that it's weekly increasing or weekly decreasing, depending on the setting, for every player. In quasi-linear setting, we have no structure over k. It's just some arbitrary set. So we cannot, we do, we do not have an order with which to compare different uh, allocations. So this weekly monotone definition for k will be stated in terms of utilities and preferences. So I will say that this, this different things. And there is some other uh, some other property of the allocation rule K called cyclical monotonicity, and it will actually be necessary and sufficient. So it is a stronger version of weak monotonicity. So K will be dominant strategy incentive compatible if and only if it is cyclically monotone. Again, I am not really stating this. I wanted to announce that these results are available. So in quasi-linear settings, you can use these two criteria to test quasi-linear, to test implementability of a given social choice, of a given allocation rule. But the most interesting part is about the general settings. Because there we can also have similar notions of monotonicity, again, in this respect. And there we will also have a sharp characterization that a given, there it will be a given social choice function. Will be dominant strategy incentive compatible if and only if it satisfies that notion of monotonicity, but there we can uh, we can go an extra mile, and with this extra notion of monotonicity, we'll have very strong implications. But we will do that next time. <laughs>